Dear friends, um, dear participants, I have really the great pleasure to open this um, conference today. I believe that uh, people who came here today are very much following the developments around us in Estonia, in the European Union. And the topic of our conference today is um, post-Brexit Europe. Our idea is to look forward to see the vision for Europe and to ask ourselves what kind of Europe we would like to live. I think that um, the question what we should ask ourselves is that what, a, what is today's raison d'etre of Europe? What is the reason of existence of the European Union today? Uh, we all know what was uh, the big idea of European Union when it was founded. It was to avoid the wars between the European countries. The second big vision was to make European people wealthy, rich, prosperous. There was also the reason uh, for founding European uh, community in that time to deliver the freedoms of Europeans, European people, and um, security. But if we, if we ask today that um, where Europe is standing today, are these goals still today um, in the air? Are they changing? Or what direction they are going to? If we see that the big goal to avoid the wars, um, this goal has been and not has been fulfilled, indeed. Uh, between Germany and France there is a friendship now and this is good for Europe. But if we look a little broader, then we can confess that we were not able, or the European Union was not able to avoid the wars of the conflicts in Ukraine, because Ukraine is also Europe. There are conflicts in Georgia, in Balkans. If we are speaking about the prosperity and wealth and the economic growth, again, um, just a few days ago, the chairman of the European Bank, Mario Draghi, made a statement that uh, it's a growing, fast-growing problem that uh, the um, differences between Europeans in their economic wealth is growing. And not only in the countries like us, like um, uh, new member states uh, coming from relatively poor economic um, zones, but also the poverty uh, of uh, Europeans in France, in Italy, in Spain is, is growing also. About freedoms, about security. Yes, freedoms, um, uh, free movement, um, free speech and others, they, they exist and, and they don't exist in a way. That um, we see um, the free movement uh, has ended up with uh, free borders, basically European borders are not controlled and this brings a lot of security concerns for um, European people. We are not uh, feeling safe ourselves in our countries. And we should ask that where else should, uh, I don't know, British, Estonian, Finnish feel safe if it's not in, in his own country? If it's own, in own country we don't have the safety and security, then we should ask what is wrong and um, what European Union, as a union, if they want to exist further, can they do something for this? To to return to the main goals, to return to the basic values, or maybe the values are changing today. So, friends, we are here to discuss um, today uh, the uh, um, visions, ideas, options for the future of Europe. We are here to discuss today the political changes in member states, in political environments. We see that uh, one on the one hand, the globalization is uh, taking broader and broader terms, but at the same time in member states, 
almost in all member states. We see the changes in the political landscape and we see more and more pro-nation states, parties, uh, raising and forming, including Estonia, including Estonia. And um, if I may say, uh, for my point of view, then I have a feeling that the European nation states are really raising now. Brexit uh, is just um, one step, uh, but the countries like Poland, like Hungary, like Czech Republic, and even the countries like Sweden and, and um, uh, Denmark and Finland, our closest neighbours, also in their countries we see the raise of uh, political parties which are gaining more and more support among the population. And they get this support because people of Finland and other countries of Estonia, people, European people, they feel that they need defence and protection of those political forces whom they can really trust who would defend their national interests. So, I will stop here myself and just better introduce our very, very excellent speakers today. Um, I think it's really the great, great pleasure to have here with us our first speaker today, Sir Gerald Corbett, who is um, a former member of uh, British Parliament, um, a long-time member, first period from uh, 93 to 90, uh, sorry, from 83 to 92, and then the period between 97 and 2017, up to the very recent elections. Sir Gerald Howard has been also the Minister of Defence of UK. He was the Parliamentary Private Secretary of Margaret Thatcher. Um, also, he was, uh, and he's uh, probably uh, the uh, very permanent uh, and, and uh, active member of um, the uh, Vote Leave campaign in UK. And also, he's a chairman of the Conservative Way Forward. So, we have a very, very respected speaker, uh, Sir Gerald 